Welcome back. I have another audiobook review I want to do. I don't have the physical copy because this was another electronic one I got from my library. But I'm here today to talk about Of Curses and Kisses. This is now my third book by Santaya Menon. And I have to say she has a style and I'm here for it. <laughs> uh, she's got dual perspective in every one of her books that I've read. And this one, I think the execution of it was the most interesting in a lot of ways. Uh, because you get very much like, here's a big scene that we're hearing from this character. Then like big like turning point event happens and we flip to the other character to get like their actual reaction instead of the original perspective character just being like assuming a reaction or anything. It was great. I loved it. It's a fun style, and I'm glad she does it. I also really appreciate that when she does it, it's very clear that they're switching. It'll be headed, like, in this book it was Gray and Jaya. And so it was like, when they're switching, you get their name up at the top of it, or said in the case of the audiobook. And then you know that the perspective is switched. And it's a really good, convenient system, and I really enjoyed it. And just overall, this was a really fun one. It's one of my favorites of hers that I've read. Um, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and it, putting that kind of modern spin on it was really fun for me. I liked seeing the ways that she implemented things from the original fairy tale, but put them in a modern story. And it's fun, too, because even at the end, you're not even entirely sure if the curse is actually a real curse and it actually existed or if it's just kind of in the minds of the characters because of the way that they've been, like, raised and stuff. So I thought that was a fun execution. And this, in comparison to I Kissed Alice, which I recently did a review of, this did an enemies to lovers in the way that I appreciate. I don't know if it entirely counts as enemies to lovers in the full execution in this case, but they definitely start on opposing sides because their families have had big disagreements for generations. So when we enter the story, Jaya is going to the same school as Gray because she's trying to get back at Gray because she thinks that he spilled some dirt on her family because their families are just at odds and have been at war. And who else would share this big, mean old dirt about her sister that's going on? So she's going, like, to get revenge and is going to try to woo Gray and then break his heart. And that's, like, her revenge plot. And so it's it's the perfect way to do an enemies to lovers, in my opinion, because it's like there's this big tension and there's this reason for them to be against each other because for generations their families haven't gotten along, but there's also a really good excuse for them to be getting closer and getting to know each other and to realize that, oh wait, maybe this family feud is really, really stupid. Versus in like I Kissed Alice where it was like, yes, a big event had happened and you could understand why that would put them at odds with each other. But then in I Kissed Alice, they just fought and fought and fought and never really tried to do anything that, or were never really forced into situations that got them to see the other person. It was just that they had their alternate personas that they really liked. And then the in-person interactions were always just full of vitriol and hate. Did not work for me. But here it works because A, they're interacting person to person and realizing that this feud is stupid because this person is much more than what the feud would lead them to believe. But then also it's like, oh, I was stupid on my end for this plan that I had kind of thing too. And that they could just grow together it was so cute and like... Gray's part of the story is he doesn't know what's up with Jaya being there and stuff. But as they, like, progress, he does fall for her and stuff. But he's, like, this tormented soul and this tormented spirit. He's, like, the beast of the story because he's been raised by his father to believe that he killed his mother because his mom died in childbirth. Then he's going to be the last heir because of this curse that's been going on and all of that. So Gray's just got this really murky, awful backstory and I'm like how can you treat your child like that how can you tell your child that they're the fault of their mother's death and stuff and oh it's awful the way his father treated him but 
because Gray has like that backstory. At one point he describes himself as like a boat that's been shipwrecked. And then at one point when Jaya's coming around to Gray, she describes herself as like a shipwreck victim who's been like stranded on an island. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're using like practically the same metaphor to talk about their issues. And it's perfect and I see how they fit together and I love this. So, like, things like that I felt like give you a good connection to why the characters would recognize familiar things in each other at the same time as just giving you, like, a, oh, this is a fun connection that they both, like, have these same or similar feelings. And it was just beautiful. I was interested in how, like, the climax and sort of the shoe dropping of the events of the story happened. Some of those things happened in ways that I did not expect, and some of the things I didn't realize until fairly close to when they were revealed, and that was really fun. So, I enjoyed this one. So, I highly recommend it. If you haven't read any Sentai Men in yet, this is a great one to start with. If you like fairy tale retellings, a great one to start with. Um, I'd ask for more recommendations, like, on a lot of my other videos, except for I think I'm just gonna go find more Sendai I'm in, and I'm pretty sure that Of Curses and Kisses is the first of a series, so I might go find that next. Anyways, let me know your thoughts if you've read any of her books, in particular Of Curses and Kisses. Otherwise, I'm gonna just head out for now, and this is the Umla Harper, signing out.